Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, the uh, uh, terminology is up for, de up for debate for some people, um, but whatever we are, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. So call us what you want, but definitely but please join us. <laughs> um, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, so you can always go to our website and watch all of our previous recordings, and I will show you at the end of today's show um, where that is and how you can get to all of our previous shows. We post recording. Um, if the uh, presenters have power, any presentations or slides or documents, they are included, and any links to anything of interest are included. So you have a one stop to get all of the everything related to a particular um, episode of Encompass Live. Um, we do a mixture of things here: presentations, interviews, mini training sessions, book review sessions, demos of things, um, basically anything um, related to libraries, we are happy to have it on the show. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do some presentations, but I also do try and bring in people from elsewhere across the state, other librarians, and from outside of Nebraska. Um, and that's what we have with us this morning. Um, Robin Hastings um, is just from just south of us in Kansas. Hi, Robin. Hello. Hello. She is the uh, Director of Technology Services at Northeast Kansas Library System, so um, just south of us, and um, does all sorts of things. It's kind of a nice broad topic there, Tech Director of Technology. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I do, I do yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> and um, earlier this year, I actually, well, she wrote an, I, the reason I got her on the show that for this particular topic, linked data and libraries, is I read an article that she wrote in Computers and Libraries magazine last fall um, mm -hmm. about linked data and libraries. And it was very interesting. And I thought it was um, a really great um, overview of everything in a topic. And I thought it'd be great to have her come on and. Um, expound a little bit more with it uh, on uh, there we go on um, on our show so uh, all right so um, I'll just um, hand it over to you Rob and then to take it away and awesome. tell us all about everything we need to know about linked data or certain Excellent. certain focus of what we need to know for linked data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is definitely an overview. Um, I know there's you, a Krista. lot of different ways you can come <laughs> at it and a lot of things related to it. So yeah, <laughs> we only have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I will uh, attempt to respect your all's time. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, uh, feel free to chime in with questions anytime. Um, I can't actually see them, but Krista will will stop me and, and uh, uh, let me know when you guys have questions. So please feel free to ask if I um, am going too fast or too slow, let me know. Mm -hmm. And do um, make note of where that raised hand thing is. I'll probably be asking a few questions um, and hopefully, uh, let's see, yeah, I can see where you're when you're raising your hands and all that good yes. stuff. So. Yeah, you should be able to see the list of attendees and mm -hmm. when they do yeah. that, it's just this whole the questions part is a separate section that I'll keep an eye on for you. All right, excellent. Yeah. So all that uh, housekeeping out of the way, um, we can, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Mm, it didn't go on the first click, scary. Um, we can start with today's uh, topics. What we're going to talk about is just a really brief what is linked data, um, how it's being used right now, uh, where what kinds of, of places you'll be finding it. Uh, we'll go over bib frame and open library in the states. We'll also go over some some international um, uses of, of linked data. Uh, I have a I have a great slide with a big pumpkin pie on it, and, and that's when we're going to talk about pie in the sky uh, ideas for linked data, and and then some actual uses that are are actually in use right now. Uh, We'll talk about how it can be used to extend library data's reach, and then we'll talk a little bit about reducing our work, reusing our work, and recycling um, using the uh, uh, linked data stuff. Um, I am going to focus a lot on um, the web part as opposed to the library data part. Uh, there was a great uh, Encompass Live episode uh, month, a month and a half ago, 
called Life After Mark, Cataloging Tools of the Future. Um, whoops, mm -hmm. forgot to close my parentheses there. Um, <laughs> I should have okay. thought some more clearly. <laughs> Um, there's a link there. It was uh, uh, I listened to it. It was very much talking about um, RDA and and linked data in libraries um, from a cataloging perspective. I'm going to come at it from more of a web perspective. Although I will certainly I'm still going to talk libraries most definitely. Um, if you're interested in getting copies of the slide, the presentation is there at the uh, slideshare.net website. Um, you can download it and print it reuse it um, however you would like. So we'll start off with that uh, overview. What is linked data? And basically it is data that is on the web that is in a format that computers can understand. Um, that is diff different most definitely from in a format that computers can read. Those of you who started off with um, in HTML, you know, 15 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, I just realized how old I am. Um, you know that HTML started out as a um, as as something that computers could read. It was it was code that browsers could use to display, but they didn't understand. They were just dumbly displaying. Um, when we switched over from HTML to XHTML, things became a little bit more um, understandable by the computer. Um, and so, linked data is is data that is understandable by computers. It should be re human readable as well, but mostly it's it's specially coded so that computers can read it and understand it. Um, and I did want to, in this slide as well, talk a little bit about the difference between linked data and linked open data. Linked data is any data that is coded so that a computer can understand it. It's in a standard uh, format. Um, Linked open data is the same thing, only it's free to use. And I'm going to be talking at the very end of the presentation about where to find that kind of stuff, the open uh, data. But uh, there is a difference between linked, I mean, you know, in licensing, if, if nothing else, between linked data and linked open data and something we tried. Uh, Robin? Um, mm -hmm. Hi. Um, okay, I'm getting a couple of... Um comments from people saying that they can't see your screen um, oh, but okay. I can um, can anyone tell me um, are you seeing what is is anyone seeing I'm seeing a slide that has a picture of a computer and it says what is linked data um, someone comment and say what they're seeing some people are oh, okay and some people aren't all right all right okay looks yeah, like the audience are and I can see it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you're having a black screen or having issue with it, then because I've gotten a couple of people that said it, but it looks like most people are on top of things. Great. Um, if you're having a black screen, um, I'd say try and um, maybe minimize and reopen, you know, just the screen that's the actual slide or potentially log out and back in again to try and set that. But it looks like generally speaking, people are seeing it. So if you are having issues, it's not something that um, apparently we can change anything from our side to, to fix it because it is coming through for most people. <laughs> All right. Thank and you. If you uh, it, and you can go to SlideShare. Um, my web, my username on SlideShare is Web Goddess, and it's the last uh, presentation I uploaded, so it should be right that, up there. If that's you, true too, yeah. If you do so, just really can't see it. Showing the slides, you could follow along over there that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Robin. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I think I've covered the basics of of linked data. We'll We'll talk about uh, these concepts uh, as we go on as well. Um, back in 2006, Tim Berners-Lee, the uh, guy who who kind of created the the World Wide Web, the HTML uh, uh, and and hypertext. Well, lots of people created it, but he gets he gets a lot of the credit. Uh, he actually started to identify um, linked data. And, and how it would work on the web. Um, again, in, in that slide share thing, I noticed my first presentation that I did on, on what we were calling Web 3.0 back then was in 2008. So um, this is something that's been around for a while in the web world um, and is just now starting to get really 
usable in the library world. So um, in 2006, uh, Tim Berners-Lee said the essential principles of linked data is that it uses URIs. Um, those are related to URLs, uh, they're universal resource identifiers as opposed to locators, and those URIs um, are names for objects. So instead of the locator being a name for a file on the web, um, the URI is a name for an object that has its own location on the web. Um, we should use HTTP URIs so people can look up those names using basic web uh, protocols. Um, we should provide information at the URI that, that identify our location in a standard form, um, RDF, JSON, which is JavaScript Object Notation, uh, which is a form of JavaScript, Turtle, which is a whole new um, language, at least to me, uh, but is, is uh, used a lot with um, uh, linked data and, and that kind of thing. And there are lots of other standard forms out there, but uh, some sort of standard form that can be interoperable, people can, and can talk with one another uh, using that standard form, that's what the information should be in. And then you should also include links to other URI objects so that other objects can be discovered via links. And that's kind of the real essence of linked data is that you've got a object and it links to other objects in standard ways. And uh, again, we'll, we'll talk more about that. We're going to talk a little bit, it's a big brain, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, semantics and linked data. That, that session that I did in 2008 for the National Association of Government Webmasters um, was really focused on the semantics of the uh, linked data thing. And one thing you really have to remember is that computers are dumb. Um, we as humans understand non-standard English or Turkish or Russian or whatever language you happen to speak. Um, it, we will understand it even if it's not perfectly grammatical. Uh, computers understand nothing that is not perfectly grammatical in whatever language you're um, you're writing in. So uh, the semantic, to be semantically understood by a computer, um, it has to be perfectly code encoded. Uh, and that is as something that you'll have, you'll run into. And it's something that, again, if you kind of grew up on the web like I did, HTML used to be really, really forgiving. You could do all kinds of crazy things and it would still display. When we switched to XHTML, which became a more um, a language that computers could understand a little bit better, it became a lot less forgiving because the more computers can understand, the less leeway you as an author have in in writing your um, your code. So that was that was something I definitely wanted to to bring up. And and this is um, um, just kind of a, a something to keep in mind while you're while you're working with linked data. Um, so we talk a lot about the different kinds of, of linked data and I wanted to talk about RDA versus RDF really quickly. Um, RDA is resource description and access and that is uh, an up-and-coming content description format for libraries. Um, it's not really a replacement for um, the AARC or MARC, but it's going to going to replace them <laughs> um, if if it continues on the way it's going. Um, basically, just because MARC um, the encoding uh, structure of MARC can't handle all of the RDA uh, uh, elements. And so we're going to be moving on to other things, and I'll definitely be um, talking about those too. So RDA is Resource Description Access. RDF is the Resource Description Framework. And here I have some, some comparison contrast contrasting, mostly comparison because they're very similar. RDA was created by library land people. Um, it, was, it was actually created by library um, folks. RDF was created by the, uh, whoops, <laughs> sorry, okay. Um, I have a standing desk and every 20, every 40 minutes uh, it says, hey, you need to stand up for 20 minutes. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so, so I turned off all of my other pop-ups, yeah. So just so people can picture, are you standing or sitting right now? 
I'm sitting right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to stand up because I sit too long and my back starts to hurt. So. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, so the resource description framework was created by the folks who, who write the uh, standards for the World Wide Web, W3C, um, uh, and those kind of folks. RDA describes and provides access points for bibliographic information, while RDF uh, provides that same, uh, those same access points for semantically valid information on the web. Uh, RDA, and I put a means of encoding metadata, but it's really not an encoding standard. It's a way of, of describing metadata, I suppose, would probably be a better way to put that, um, for library resources, whereas RDA means of encoding metadata for web-based resources. Um, and again, RDF isn't really an encoding thing. Neither of them are, but they describe. Uh, RDA is structured on Ferber. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the functional requirements for bibliographic records, I came that pretty sure that's what that stands for. Um, <laughs> it is uh, it is a new way to uh, to look at our bibliographic records in libraries, uh, and it and it is the basis of RDA. Whereas RDF is structured on a semantic language, usually it's the working ontology language, um, which is I tell you I told the. <laughs> I turned, thought I turned off all my uh, notifications. Um, it is uh, uh, working ontology language is a semantic language that is it's a vocabulary essentially um, that that RDF can use. Um, RDA can be expressed in multiple languages, um, and those are the encoding standards like Mark 21, which is the current uh, use, BibFrame, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit in a few minutes. Um, Etc. There are, you know, maybe maybe others that come along. Um, as RDF can also be expressed in multiple languages, uh, such as XML and Turtle. Those languages are the actual encoding of the data, um, whereas the RDA and RDF are really more content descriptors um, and not specific formats. There, so. This RDF is what I'm going to be talking about for most of the rest of the session. Um, like I said, if you want to learn more about RDA and, and cataloging and all that, I really encourage you to go back to um, the second slide where I, I gave you a link to an excellent presentation right here in Encompass Live um, on just that. So RDF, um, it, it is in, expressed in triples. Um, you'll hear uh, that that referred to quite frequently, and it's basically a subject, a predicate, and an object. The subject and object are nouns. The predicate is kind of a verb or a relationship. So this um, this particular uh, triple structure, there's actually a couple of of I should have, probably should have copied the author twice. But the author is named Robin Hastings, is a triple structure. The author is a director of technology services, is also a triple structure. Uh, you can see down at the bottom of the slide that those relationships are encoded in turtle format um, here using uh, the RDF uh, information using Dublin Core, the DC uh, vocabulary. Um, and then example stuff, um, <laughs> because a lot of this is very new. Uh, so that's basically when you hear about RDF triples and, and semantic triples, that's kind of what you're, you're thinking about, what, what you're going to hear. Um, oh, and uh, with that triple structure, you're, you're encoding things as opposed to strings of data, uh, strings of text that computers don't understand, they understand objects, and so uh, that helps to, to encode that. Um, okay, so MARC, this is a basic MARC record in um, using the AARC2 encoding. Um, it is kind of locked up, uh, no, no search engine at this time um, can reach into our catalogs and understand this data. Um, it it's, keeps our, our books, our records, our materials out of search engines because our data is locked up in MARC right now. Um, the next slide 
next several slides I'm going to show you is this data in BibFrame. And I'm not going to go into the details of BibFrame. It's really, really technical and um, crazy. But I do want to talk a little bit about how you can take all of that information that was in that one slide that I showed you before, and you can see how, um, how much more extensive uh, the BibFrame record is. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is, is the, um, uh, the nature of BibFrame. Um, it just, there's a lot more white space. Um, and that's because storage, when Mark was created, uh, computer storage was expensive. Today, if you catch a, a decent sale at Best Buy, you can pick up a terabyte hard drive for 60 bucks. Um, that was obviously not the case when Mark was created. And so it's very compact and there's lots of abbreviations and, and uh, lots of, of ways of, of compacting all that information in their bib frame. Um, we just don't have those same issues now. Uh, storage is cheap, 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 and we have plenty of room to um, add lots of different information. So um, basically, the difference between Mark and the bib frame, I, I just kind of wanted to show you how, how much space, <laughs> how much bigger a record could be in, in bib frame and how much more information then that we can, um, can include on that same, uh, same record. This is um, the output. The first bib frame, the three slides before, were um, output by Python. Um, the uh, computer language. Um, it's a Python uh, um, little tool that they use. Uh, this is output from um, Library of Congress's X query code into RDF. So uh, the other thing I kind of wanted to point out in this kind of um, expanded section here on the left is uh, bib frame is a vocabulary. So it is, it's got the prefix, if you'll notice all these BF colon, those are um, bib frame vocabularies. And so that's um, yeah, just kind of a, a quick and dirty introduction. Um, bib frame vocabulary is comprised of the RDF properties, classes, and relationships between them. So all that information in the previous slides basically is to um, connect all this information together. And then each of these little circles is its own object connected to subject, creator, um, publisher, published at, the format. All those are connections. Those are the predicates. Um, and then the, the, each of the circles is a noun. Um, and that's how they're connected. So you can kind of see how um, the work has has a subject of whatever. Um, it has a creator of whomever. Uh, you can see how those triples are expressed here in this um, in this diagram, and it also kind of gives you a little bit of um, um, Ferber here because you're talking about work level, and then the instance is the manifestation. Um, level of, of Ferber. Uh, so you've got, uh, you've got a little bit of Ferber going on as well. So that's what um, is coming. I will tell you BIP still in, it is very, very fluid. It's still being uh, developed. Things change really, really quickly because it is not completely worked out. Um, so I'm not, this is the end of, of my talking about BIP frame and, and all that. Um, I do want to tell you, though, that if you have a chance to, um, to take a look at it, it's a really cool kind of, of way of, of thinking about our materials in libraries. Um, it, it allows for cooperative cataloging in ways that are just not possible now, um, and far more granularly. Uh, so. Um, we can we can work together a whole lot easier on stuff uh, on our cataloging stuff, um, and then 
it also allows for automatic updates. If, say, the creator um, dies and the new um, death date needs to be added to a record, now thousands of librarians get into their systems and update those records individually. If it's linking to a URI create of a creator of an object, all that all you have to do is update that URI, and updates automatically kind of flow out through through to all the people who are linking to it. Um, so those are just some of the the benefits of where we're heading with linked data in libraries. Some examples of linked data that are already in place. Uh, one is, is the open library, There's, and its goal is one page per book for every book published ever. That's, that's the open library's goal. Um, not sure how close they are to reaching that, but, uh, but they do have uh, a lot of books available. Um, and one thing I'd like to point out down here at the very bottom, and you may not be able to see it because of my taskbar that won't go away. Oh, hey, wait a minute. There, it just went away. And I moved. Okay. So down here at the very bottom of the rec of the, the slide, um, kind of in the, uh, the bottom right there, you can download the catalog record in either RDF or JSON web format. And again, that JSON is uh, JavaScript ob object notation. Um, and which means it is something that you can then add to a web page and manipulate with JavaScript very easily. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about ideas for that. But um, I just kind of wanted to show you what the Open Library is already using linked data in RDF format to put together um, a, a library of books uh, as as best they can. So. This here, uh, this huge file, um, I don't know how well you can see it on, on your screens. Wow. This is yeah. a, um, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a lot of data. Uh, this is as of August 2014, so it's already almost a couple of years old, but this is kind of the um, linked data set environment that is available right now. Um, so there's a lot of linked data out there right now um, that we can make use of. I will tell you it is not, not particularly easy. Um, I keep going back to HTML, but this really, I, I, it feels familiar to me because I remember when HTML, um, I, I, I would write my HTML code in something approaching Notepad. I mean, very basic. I had to know the tags. I had to write the code. Uh, and then they started creating HTML editors. And uh, pretty soon there's Dreamweaver level editors where you, you know, what you see is what you get. You're not actually interacting, you're not writing code, you're, you're interacting with um, the WYSIWYG uh, editor. And then finally you've got WordPress where you, you just write the content. You, you don't ever have to worry about the, the HTML, you never write a tag, um, it's, all, it's all done for you. Right now we're still in the notepad. Um, area, <laughs> the notepad era, I suppose, of linked data. It's hard. It's hard to write. It's, uh, it has to be done pretty, I mean, they're starting to get editors out there and the Library of Congress has some on their site, but they're still not great. <laughs> um, so a lot of this has to be written by hand. And so you do have all this data out there that is being produced but not a whole lot of um, real uses yet. But that, again, I, I have a feeling will come. So anyway, this is just kind of a, an overview of your uh, uh, linked data availability, what's, what's out there right now. So I told you I'd have a big pie for you, didn't I? Um, this, is, this is where I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of pie in the sky um, uses of linked data. Uh, there is, there are a few um, sort of proof of concept things, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about some of those. <clears throat> Facebook does not listen to me. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about those a little bit, but uh, and and we'll actually go take a look at some of them. I think uh, here in a minute, but. Um, this is kind of the 
some of the stuff that you can do, I haven't actually seen done yet. It's possible, but I've not seen it. One of the things I'm thinking of is, say today is Steve Jobs' birthday, um, 1955. Uh, Steve Jobs has an entry in the virtual authority file, VIAF. That's one of those nodes in that, um, that web I showed you last slide which gives his birthday among lots of other information about the man. Um, your web page or application knows it's his birthday. Uh, so it pulls a picture from the, the virtual authority file and then starts searching in Wikimedia or Wikipedia uh, for media he might be connected to. So there are biographies, a book and a movie listed there couple of movies I think now. Um, so it pulls information about those and uses the info stored in Amazon to give rich and detailed descriptions of that media. This is where we get into linked data versus linked open data. Right at the moment I don't think Amazon's data is open but hopefully you know pie in the sky right. Um, it also knows from Wikipedia that he founded the Apple company. So it goes to the Yahoo Finance page and pulls stock information for Apple and provides that as well. Again, not open yet, but could be. If you happen to have a library lover coding this, uh, this stuff, it could also check WorldCat for uh, links to any media referencing Steve Jobs or Apple in a library near you and give you links into the catalog for that information. Um, you can uh, then see the information about the media, see the availability in your local catalog, and uh, place a hold right there from the web or page or application that you're in. All you have to do is supply your library card number and PIN or however you log into your, your library account. Um, again, that's where we get into the pie in the sky. Right at the moment, none of our libraries are set up to, to do that, but if we start all using BibFrame tomorrow, you know, hey. Um, one of the things actually that I had talked about, again, in, in the 2008 uh, presentation that I thought was really cool is searching. Um, how linked data and semantic uh, information on the web is going to affect searching. Uh, and I think that's going to be, um, we're already starting to see that a little bit. But uh, I think that's going to be exciting because not only can we search for stuff um, that we can search for now, but we can also search inside of data stores. All those linked data stores are available to search into. And if libraries are part of that linked data store, we're all of a sudden no longer hidden. We're not the dark web anymore. We're part of, uh, we come out into the light and become part of the uh, um, the regular web, the part that's accessible via Google. Um, so, you know, you can, uh, uh, the other thing that I think is, is interesting about this is in our ILSs itself, and this is my third kind of pie in the sky thing, with a ILS that understands linked data, you can pull in information from multiple sources. Um, you can pull in, uh, I, I, we've got a, a local history project here in Kansas that uses uh, Dublin Core in Omeka, um, which is a platform sort of like WordPress, but for uh, images, and, uh, and, and it natively supports Dublin Core. Um, so if I had a book about Kansas, I could go and query that Omeka instance and pull the information into my catalog very easily. Um, and so you, all of a sudden our catalogs are far richer uh, with data than they, they are right now. So that's kind of kind of a pie in the sky look at, at ILSs and it's also limited by my imagination. Um, one of the things that I think is really, really exciting about linked data and us making our data available as, as linked triples uh, is the possibility that people who are not connected with libraries right now will have ideas for how to use our data in ways we just have never considered. And so um, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to the most is trying to figure out how people are going to um, use all this rich data that we have in our, right now that's locked up in our catalogs. If we make that available, <laughs> yeah, it's been 20 minutes, so it's time to sit down now. Sorry. Um, if we make that available, um, we will uh, uh, be opening up a world of data to people who can do anything they want with it, and that will be so exciting. 
in my opinion. So I said search already uses linked data a little bit, um, and, and it does. Uh, right now, a lot of times, um, what we consider linked data is uh, also known as a knowledge graph, and Google, Facebook, uh, a lot of different social networking type of, of sites use linked data to create knowledge graphs. What we've got here on the screen is a Google result for my local public library. Um, so you can see that the um, description of the library is pulled from Wikipedia. Almost all of Wikipedia's data is linked um, in in a uh, in a linked format in a way that pe that computers can understand. So um, that's that's where you're starting to see these cards of information in your Google. Uh, searches is because it's finding that uh, that data that it understands and pulling it together. Um, the thing that I think is kind of cool is the hours. Uh, the day that I took this this um, picture, it was open from nine to seven, uh, and I this card knows that because they have on on the Lawrence Public Library they have coded that information, their hours information, using schema.org tags. Um, that's what Google understands, and that is just a uh, link, one of the many link data standards that are out there. Um, I know that they use WordPress as their um, foundation for their, their website, and I also know that WordPress has a schema.org plugin. I don't know if they use that or if that was hand coded in um, themselves. But uh, it is possible for anybody to, who uses WordPress to download this schema.org plugin and start um, co encoding their data in ways that Google understands. So now instead of having to click through to the library to find out when it's open today, which is a fairly common use of our, our library websites, let's be honest, uh, it's just right there, um, which makes it easier for um, patrons to use our data, um, use our information, and uh, um, makes a nice display for Google as well. So that's all, um, that's all there. Some other options that I think are pretty exciting. This um, right here, and I, okay, yeah, now you can see it. This right here is linked jazz, and this is kind of a um, proof of concept, kind of like what I talked about earlier, where you've got uh, all these jazz players uh, linked in different ways. And let me, okay, whoa, whoa, there's Duke Ellington. Let me link, click on him. Um, and I know this is going to be really kind of tiny on your, um, on your screen, but Duke Ellington's information there is uh, from Wikipedia. Like I said, a lot of the stuff you're going to see now is from Wikipedia. And it talks about, you know, when he was born, when he died, he was an American composer, pianist, and big band leader. He wrote over a thousand compositions, and he is connected in some way to everybody else that you see on this screen. So um, this is kind of a this is the dynamic version, um, which moves around as you uh, as you click on things. Uh, they have similar free and fixed uh, versions as well, but this is all kind of created on the fly using linked data. Um, so that was just kind of something I wanted to show show you guys um, yeah, that, that's as well really, as. That is really slick, Rob. And yeah, I brought it up on my screen here. And I've bookmarked it just so you, everyone knows for, for everyone to be able to get to later. OK, and it's also linked oh. in the SlideShare notes. Uh, so yeah, the that's. Anim seeing the animated, how it's animated like that really gets the picture of what you're talking about. It really. Mm -hmm. yeah really visual you can see oh it goes this way and that way and yes I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah the, the picture on the slide is very static but boy you pull up linked jazz.org and all of a sudden you've got uh, oh yeah it's alive <laughs> a very uh -huh, exactly exactly so I definitely wanted to, to show you guys um, that is how it is being used right now um, today other ways it's being used today is data.gov and I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the vast amounts of information that our our government is producing um, every day in in linked formats, um, there are some 
a few very, very limited uh, examples here on this slide. Um, they have you know, local severe weather warnings and systems in Missouri, which is where I'm originally from, product recall data from the federal government, and then what I thought was interesting was they have higher ed data sets uh, with information on every institution of higher ed that participates in the federal student financial aid programs, which is a lot of them. Um, but that's kind of dry. Uh, one thing that you can do is um, search for applications. There are, are tools that make use of this data, including citydata.com. Um, and this, I typed in Lawrence, which is my current hometown, and it gives me um, the current weather forecast. That's actually from yesterday, uh, because I'm, you know, I do futz with my, my slides up until the very last minute. Um, this is information that, that I got from citydata.com yesterday. And you can see that um, you can look at neighborhoods, you can look at the schools, you can look at the assessment values, you can look at sex offenders. Um, you can see uh, all kinds of information about how the population is split up. Um, we're a, little, a few more females in, in town. Uh, we're fairly young. We're, uh, we're younger than the Kansas median. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of information that you might find uh, interesting. Um, another source of um, information, and honestly, I didn't find a whole lot. There are like nine pages of tools on that data.gov site. Uh, I found almost nothing about public libraries. <laughs> Uh, the only things I found were really searches for public libraries. And here, this is not very pretty and it's also very small. Um, I can make it bigger. Uh, this is a basic search for a public library that uses the link data that the data.gov folks make available. Um, and this uses... Uh, Public Library Survey 2012 and um, Archives Library Information Center uh, data kind of mashed together and, and, uh, and put together. So there's not a lot, there's a lot of information and a lot of cool websites and cool data being, or cool um, applications being built on top of all this data. But um, not a, lot, not a lot of library stuff, uh, which I have noticed. So we are going to go from um, basic link data, and not library related necessarily, in the U.S. to what's going on outside the U.S. And this is just a couple of options here um, that I have mentioned, or I've seen mentioned. Uh, in England, the British National Bibliography, and that's the URL for it there. They're working on creating a repository of linked data objects based on National Library holdings. What that means is for every piece of material that is in their National Library, they are creating a triple, um, a set of triples actually, uh, to describe that, that piece of material. Um, and you can kind of see how they're doing uh, at that URL. They're, they're uh, again, I don't think they're very, um, they're very done. I mean, I don't know how far along they are, but it's, it's a huge project. But it's something that they're giving, uh, giving a shot to. Uh, and Germany has a Culture Graph. It's a linked open data service that, again, is trying to create an individual information object for each kind of material held by libraries in Germany. Um, and again, there's that, linked, uh, that link there uh, on the slide to kind of send you, if you want to take a look at what they're doing, that's actually the English language. You'll notice there at the second, uh, the, right behind the domain, there's that EN. It's the English language version. If you speak German, you might uh, get more information out of the uh, uh, just the, the home page, but if you don't, if you're you're like me and only speak English, um, that's that's where you would go to find out more information to kind of poke around at it and see what's see what they're doing. Um, these are all things that 
there's another uh, Switzerland, Sweden. <laughs> uh, I think Switzerland has a um, has a national project. Um, and you know, here in the U.S., the Library of Congress is working with a couple of different collaborators on uh, trying to make BibFrame work here in the uh, in the U.S., which will require that our data be linked. So um, it's it's not just uh, um, national libraries elsewhere. Our national library is also working on this. So I talked about at the very end um, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, we're gonna if we can continue on this path and and go with with uh, linked data, we can reduce the amount of work going into reinventing the record at each library. Right now, um, there's a lot of copy cataloging going on that changes the record individually, that may not have to happen so much. Um, we may be able to uh, just make very small changes for our individual library and and make use of, of this linked data in collaborative, collabor collaborative categorization. Yeah, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for there. <laughs> um, Okay, so and then we'll re we can reuse the library's data in new ways, and um, not only we can, but like I said earlier, this opens up uh, other people who may not have the same um, blinders sometimes that we do in library land. Um, they can take our data and and make use of it in ways that it, I you know we may not even be able to consider. So. Um, that's very exciting. And then recycling. Um, right now we share MARC records. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of copy cataloging with uh, uh, records from WorldCat and, and various other places. Um, I think that will continue even further with more sharing with uh, when we have common URIs that all libraries can use and we can just point to a central data source um, that makes, again, collaborative cataloging useful and easy and uh, hopefully cheaper. So, all right, well, I have nine minutes left, I guess, for questions. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have anything, anything has come up? Not a problem, no, we've got plenty of time, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, if anybody does have any questions or comments or your own thoughts and ideas on linked data and how we are using it or should be using it or could use it. Um, go ahead and type into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface. I am uh, monitoring that here. Uh, nothing has come in uh, while you were talking. I, um, <laughs> like I, I would have jumped in, <laughs> um, yeah, that's, but that's okay. Well, and I forgot to ask um, while I was talking about the um, the uses of linked data and libraries, RDA and BibFrame and all that. I I don't think there are many people using BibFrame right now, but a lot of people are using RDA. And mm -hmm. I was going to ask uh, if your library is using RDA, if you wanted to raise your hand um, so we could see. Yeah, use the raise hand option. It's over there on the left-hand side of your uh, GoToWebinar interface, little hand in a circle. If you are using RDA, uh, let Robin know. A few are coming up. Mm -hmm. okay. um, like I said, the RDA, as it is, um, as it goes right now, is not. Um, it's it's usable in Mark, but all of the cool link data information and the ability to get data out of our, our siloed catalogs and all that is just not really possible with, with uh, uh, Mark 21 encoding as it stands mm -hmm. now. So, and um, We do actually have a question related to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, When do you estimate library catalog data will show up in web searches? When we ditch Mark. <laughs> when that will happen? I don't know. I, right. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've been in libraries for 17 years and they've been talking about getting rid of Mark since the day I started. So um, I don't I don't know when that's going to happen. I think if BibFrame is a viable alternative um, and and is started to use at the Library of Congress level and then as it starts to trickle down um, 
but it's going to be a huge change. I mean, all of our vendors and all of our our um, various cataloging uh, tools are going to have to change. And so I understand why Mark isn't just tossed over and we go on to the next thing. I mean, I really do. But honestly, the best answer I can give you is when we get rid of Mark and we go on to a another um, format, be that bib frame or whatever, um, that is linked yeah. data friendly. It's gonna like yeah, it's gonna take uh, there's so many different sides that have to come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. for that. Uh, yeah. yeah, and there even when it does become potentially the more prevalent way, there's still gonna mm -hmm. be the ones that aren't because just like we sure. have now, we have libraries at every every level and every version of things, and then <laughs> um, it's just the the nature of the beast. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So it, I it could. Never be a hundred percent, but yeah, get there <laughs> someday. Um, someone does comment that said RDA has nothing to do to do really with linked data. It's strictly a content standard. Right, right. But it is. Um, it's how we're going to get linked data, basically, into um, like BibFrame. BibFrame is what is actually going to be the uh, encoding for the linked data. RDA. It gives us some options to, to make linked data easier, but no, it's it's not a linked data. Kind of like a, a step, a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, a foundation, something to build on. Mm -hmm. Maybe a... It's yeah, it's it's definitely it's an it's a content standard. It's not encoding. It's it's above uh, the level of encoding for linked data. Um, it's it's above that, but mm -hmm. it is. I mean, it's AARC two is not going to get us into linked data. That's definitely not. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it it is linked in. It's loop, lumped in with the linked data stuff because it can be useful. Um, mm -hmm. Well, with the encoding, but yeah, it's not specifically a linked yeah. data standard. Yeah. No. There's a lot of different things you have to think about <laughs> that are going to go into this, and some maybe even more, more peripheral. Mm-hmm than others, but it's it's a big picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Idea. yeah. Cool. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Anything else you want to know? As Robin said at the beginning, this was kind of an overview, not necessarily a step-by-step uh, -step instructional guide. No. <laughs> uh, just to get you thinking about it and, you know, something to maybe bring back to your libraries and say, maybe we should work on something. That's what I'm getting from this. Like you said, when you were talking about there's not a lot out there about libraries and that made me think that's something we need to work on then that's mm -hmm. something we need to think about because other or other other groups jazz artists somebody decided mm -hmm. I'm interested in jazz I'm gonna put this thing together and make it happen mm -hmm. um, we need I to forget do something with yeah sure and I forget who said it honestly but I have run across the um, uh, the quote uh, there's a library shaped hole in the internet um, mm -hmm. We should be providing information, and we're not. And uh, and to do that, we're going to have to go to BibFrame or, um, you know, in some way, shape, or form, uh, make our our data linked and out there. Mm -hmm. And yep, it's up to us because nobody's going to mm -hmm. do it for us. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't look like any other urgent questions have come in while we've been chatting here, and that's fine. Um, I've got, uh, like I said, I oh, I should add the link to your article the, when I get around. To, I didn't even think of that. the original article that I found that had to do with this. I'll put in the delicious links as well. Awesome. Um, so if anybody has anything urgent you want to type in right now before we move on. No. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Robin, for this update. Um, we had done stuff. We've done things like you said previously on RDA, and we had done the linked data um, one a few years ago. But it has been a while, and things. You know, it's always good to keep this in mind and reminding people this is something we need to get out there. The get into the internet. This is something and, to think yeah. about when we're making our decisions in our libraries. Yeah. So. Yeah, keep it in mind as you're going through mm -hmm. that. All right, then I think that will wrap it up for um, your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, awesome. for attending. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen. <laughs>
right. for the day. And as I said, I was um, this is just, I still got to put somewhere in here. Here's our delicious account where I was uh, collecting um, at some of the links as Robin was going through a presentation. I will go back through the slides just to double check, and I know I didn't catch everything here. <laughs> Um, when the show is recorded, when I have the recording done um, and processed, it will be loaded here onto our website. Um, if you just Google Encompass Live, you come up with us. Luckily, so far, nobody else has called anything this, so we are the first couple of results <laughs> um, to get to our website. Um, but our archives are right here underneath our upcoming sessions. is linked to our archive sessions. This is all of our previous ones, and just like we have our last week's show here, um, we will have the recording on our YouTube channel and the presentation, the link to Robin's slides on her slide share, and all my delicious links that I've been collecting for it will all be there. I will let you all know when it's ready and um, available potentially later today if things go smoothly. Um, other than that, I hope you join us um, next week when our topic is adult new adult fiction. What is this new adult fiction? Um, new category of literature or stepped up um, YA novels. So this is just a little something um, different that's uh, come out, a different type of um, genre of literature potentially and um, Ann Matsky who was used to be it was a formerly at one of our libraries here in Nebraska Wilson Public Library and Coza is going to come and talk to us about this new genre and give a little more um, insight onto what exactly we're talking about with this new type of literature that's coming up so I hope you join us for that next week and any of our other topics that we have here coming up go ahead and register uh, also we are on Facebook so our, if you are a big Facebook user do pop over there and like our page I post reminders um, um, here's one for today. Oh, that was for last week. Sorry. Um, <laughs> reminders when we're, our show is coming on. Um, let, let you know when our recordings are available. Here's when the previous recording one. So um, if you are big on Facebook, please do pop over there and like us there. Uh, so there we go. Um, Hmm. Okay, actually, we did have a question that came in, and I think I will go back and go to it just because it came in and it sounded, it's a good one here that someone just let <laughs> in the last minute. Sorry about that. Um, someone wants to know, so going back to our topic, uh, what does putting book information on the web mean? If someone searches for Washington, will all the books with Washington as a subject come up? Um, it depends on how, how we do it. Uh, I'm really actually thinking that... Um, search engines will be smart enough to pull up, kind of like World of Cat, um, mm -hmm. the books about Washington in your library. Um, and so it would be another way of getting into your local library's catalog. Um, and that would, that would be done by figuring out your IP address and where it's located and, and kind of guessing uh, at first. Um, <laughs> but I think um, that would be... I, I, I don't think you'd get, you know, every book ever written necessarily. Um, I think you would get every book hopefully in your local library and yeah, I don't know. Um, just just if like we'd... now when you do certain things online, when I search for things, it will know where I am geographically. It knows I'm sitting mm -hmm. in Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska and it focuses, even if I just put in a general search, I don't mm -hmm. specifically type that in, it knows that's where I am and brings me things sometimes that are specific to my location. Right. right. And if and we I have think... our book information out there in the same way, like mm -hmm. right now you took for, look for a subject, you will find books on Amazon, mm -hmm. things like that because they are out there open. Mm -hmm. But you would, it will not come up right away with, here's your local library down the street that you can go and get this for free and check it out and head over there this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. and that's what we're yeah. hoping to jump to. Mm -hmm. Just to, to so people, when they're looking for that, have an option to purchasing it on Amazon. Right. Because right now, that's, that's, that's really the only option, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing a basic Google search and you're not thinking of your local library, that's, that's what you're presented with. Now, WorldCat yeah. is using some linked data in mm -hmm. their in their catalog now and I'm starting to see more WorldCat links but 
not nearly enough. <laughs> yeah, and I remember when they um, first started doing that, it was I used to see it all the time, and then I don't know if, what changed where, but then I started seeing it less, but it's kind of coming mm -hmm. back more that when you do a search, it will come up, it will mix in with all of your regular old um, mm -hmm. results as well, yeah. And that helps yeah. you jump to it, if, same kind of thing, if you can get into WorldCat, and it also knows where you are, or you put in your mm -hmm. zip code, then it will focus down into the libraries geographically closest to you. Right. Right, and I, I'm guessing that's how uh, Google or whatever comes beyond Google, behind Google um, will will try and do it. Is is make it geographically um, reasonable? Yeah. Ideally, <laughs> that's good. <gonna happen. laughs> all right, all right. Thanks. I just wanted to get that one question in because I thought it was good to discuss that. All right. So sure. then, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, Robin, for being here with us today. Um, well, thank you, Krista, for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. Um, that will wrap it up for today's show. So I hope you'll join us next. Um, we'll see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>